lesson five seven is scatter plots and trend lines. Something that you'll probably come back to pretty easily, and you probably have a pretty good grasp on. Um, the tricky part is writing the equation of a trend line, but other than that, it's pretty easy things. So, scatter plot. Do you remember scatter plots at all? Basically, it's a graph of scattered dots, right? That's generally speaking what a scatter plot is. Officially, a graph that relates two different sets of data by displaying them as ordered pairs. So obviously each point is an ordered pair. And this first example over here is an example of a positive correlation. By looking at the dots or at the points, it's positive because as you move to the right, the dots are going up. Okay? I like to think as we, as x value is increasing, the y value is increasing. So both sets of data tend to increase. That's why you're moving right and up. Second one is your negative correlation. What do you know about the dots here? Well, but they're, as we move to the right, they're moving down. And so the idea here is, as you move to the right of x, so as x is increasing, my y values are coming down. And so what we're going to say here is as one set increases, the other set decreases. So with positive, both items are increasing. With negative, you've got one increasing and the other decreasing. And then if all else fails, third option. What do you notice about these dots here? They're all over. They're not going up in a line. They're not going down in a line. They're just all over. And that's the example where there's not really a relationship between the two sets of data. Okay? What? Yeah. Okay. And so that is a little bit about scatter plots and what they look like. Um, you have some, if I recall, in homework that are just, you know, what kind of trend is this? Positive negative or no correlation. Now you'll notice here, and I think that they have this at the top of the next page, besides correlation, so we're also going to talk about causation. And causation is when one, when a change in one quantity causes a change in a second quantity. So something about the first piece of information causes the second piece of information to change. That is causation. Correlation, they're related, but they're not going to necessarily change each other, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to talk about, in each situation, is there likely to be a correlation? And if so, does the correlation reflect a causal relationship? Okay, I know. I want to say casual so bad, but causal, based on is there causation? I don't. It's spelled differently, I think, isn't it? All right, hold on. I'm, I'm dumb, so just leave me alone. Yeah, I'm curious. Look it up real quick. I'm it? pretty sure because is it? Okay. Yes. Is it spelled the same? Isn't this casual? C A S U A L. Yeah, I think yeah. So. And that one's casual. C A U S A L. Oh, that's. Oh. So there is a slight difference in spelling. It's just, it's just yeah. switched it's, I said slight, so. Okay. So, first of all, we're going to ask, is there a correlation? And we're going to try and define that as positive, negative, or none. And then if there's a correlation, is it a causal relationship? So does a change in one quantity affect the other quantity? So, A, let's talk this one out. The time spent exercising and the number of calories burned. Are these related? Are they correlated? Does the time you spend exercising affect the number, relate to the number of calories burned? Yes? So there is a correlation. Now, let's talk about is that a positive correlation or negative correlation? I'm just guessing. Well, don't just guess. 
you gotta be able to explain why. Uh, well, uh, you're burning calories and it's going down. What's going down? Calories. Okay, but the wording is number of calories burnt. So if you're burning calories, if the number of calories burned, how do I want to say this? Try and figure out. So time spent exercising. What happens the more time you spend exercising? The more calories you burn. The more calories you burn. So what's happening? As you increase your time exercising, your calories, your calories burned are also increasing. Is that a positive or negative correlation? That's positive because they are increasing together. So I am going to say here positive correlation to start. Now, is this a causal relationship? Is the change in one affecting the other? Yes? The more time you spend exercising, the more calories being burned, right? So if you change how much time you're exercising, you're going to change how many calories you're burning. Thank you. always keep band-aids on hand because usually fixes easy stuff in the classroom, right? Okay, so positive correlation. And then I'm also going to say, and there is a causal relationship. Okay, positive correlation, and yes, there is a causal relationship. More time spent exercising causes more calories to be burned. I'm going to write that down. So write what you want. More time spent exercising causes... More calories to be burned. So those are the things you need to be able to think of here. It's a positive correlation because the more time you exercise, the more calories burned. Those are increasing numbers. And there's a causal relationship because that more time spent exercising is causing more calories to be burned. So if you can put in there that something is causing the other to happen, you're going to be able to talk causal relationship. Okay, ready to talk B? The cost of a family's vacation and the size of the house. Thoughts here. This is a different one, isn't it? So I'm looking for Input from you guys so we can discuss it. Uh, maybe the cost of the vacation goes up the bigger the house. Could that be possible? Yeah. I mean, is it a situation where the more you spend on vacation, is it possible the bigger type of house you have, they have? Okay. Is it guaranteed? No. It's not a guarantee. But it is a possibility, isn't it? It could mean bigger fame. And see, this is where we get into the, hmm, you know, there's not, this is a little, this one's a little, um, I don't know, foggier. Okay, well, hold on. I'm only on B right now. Okay. So 
I would go with the idea, and I wouldn't say definitely, but I would say there's likely the correlation that the more a family spends on vacation, the bigger their house is. Now, what kind of correlation is that? If their cost of vacation is going up and the size of their house is going up, that is a positive, positive again because they're both increasing. So I'm going to say it is likely to be a positive correlation. Now, here's the deal, though. Is it a causal relationship? Is one causing the other? Does the cost of a family's vacation cause the size of the house to change? No. So this is an example where it is, I'm going to say likely, likely to be a positive correlation, but no causal relationship. You want um, for a more defined explanation, the more a family spends a vacation, the bigger their house is likely to be, and that's in relation to the positive correlation. So, more a family spends on vacay. The bigger the house is likely to be. Again, not definite, but possibility. Okay, so likely a positive correlation, no causal relationship. Okay, so finish writing what you need there, and then think about C. We're talking about, we're getting ready to talk about C, please. I'm so nervous. C. The height of a student and the grade earned on a quiz. I believe this is no correlation. Why would you say no correlation? Okay. So what? No tall students get A's, short students get F's? Or is it short students get A's, tall students get F's? Okay. So thus, the point, there is no correlation. Hey, and I said it both ways. You know, tall A, short F's, or short A's, tall F's. I wish it was tall A. Oh, All yeah. Tall students get A's. Sorry about your luck if you're short. Is that what you're I saying? Yeah, yeah. Best, best grades ever. Okay. And if there's no correlation, there's no causal relationship. Okay. Okay, D. The price of bananas and the number of pounds of bananas bought. And this could really, you can look at most anything. The price of something and the number of it bought. Okay. This one just happens to be bananas. Okay. Is it well, okay, but so it's the price of bananas and the number of pounds bought. Not the cost of the pounds bought. The number of pounds bought. So as the price of bananas increases... That's how I always start. As the first thing increases, price of bananas increase. What would you say about the number of pounds of bananas bought? Are people likely to buy more or likely to buy less? Less. Less, because as the price of something goes up, you know, if something was five dollars last week and it's ten dollars this week. Like gas. Okay, like gas. You know, when it's two dollars a gallon versus four dollars a gallon. 
as that price increases, you're likely to buy less. And so same thing with price of bananas. Okay. So what is that? If I've got price increasing and the number of pounds bought decreasing, this is a negative correlation. Is it causal? Does the price of bananas cause a change in the number of pounds of bananas bought? It is, isn't it? Okay, the higher price causes less bananas to be bought. So I'm going to say negative correlation, and there is a causal relationship. Negative correlation, and there is a causal relationship. I feel like I'm set, trying to say casual. Price of banana. Higher price causes less bananas to be bought. That's how I'm going to say it. Higher price causes less bananas oops, to be bought. What? So I accidentally keep spelling the wrong thing. Um, trust me, I'm struggling. I struggle, struggle, <laughs> struggle to spell casual and not casual. Well, I keep doing it. But then again, I'm also having problems spelling relationship. No excuses there. I just <laughs> keep wanting to leave the I out and go straight for the P and. Okay. I'm checking something here before I decide how I want to handle the next problem. So go ahead and start looking on the back and think about how we set up that scatter plot. This is hurting your brain already. Huh? This is hurting your brain already. Hurting your brain already. Yeah, my brain's like. Wait a minute. What is, what does Jason have in front of him? You found your notes? They're in my bag. This is gonna hurt my brain. Wait, you actually brought your stuff to class. Imagine? Yeah, because I'm just gonna walk straight to my class. I don't want to stop. Oh, Usually he can't find his notes though, or maybe he's just being lazy and not bringing them lately. Is I mean, that what it really is? Normally I don't bring notes. Today I have to call someone at the school like immediately. Huh? So I have to call someone at the school immediately. Oh, no, that's his business. No, that's your yeah. business. your business. Uh -huh. Oh, no, what just happened? Oh, no, no, no. You have a bitch. I don't have to talk with Yeah, he literally just said What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he goes to me. What did that happen? What? I was going like this. I just have a lip. Here, I'll show you a picture. I got you. Okay, I think I just screwed up the homework. You know, I think it's on all over tonight? Yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's the week. What? It's a fun day. I'll just show you things. So you always look for that. It was worse when I was little. I was like, hey, it's like, I was 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 like,
Okay. Did you fix it? No. Asked her if she fixed it. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't actually screwed up like I thought I did, but I thought oh, I really okay. screwed it up. So, okay. I know how I'm going to handle it now. Okay, guys, you ready? No. No. Sure. Yes. Okay, guys, you ready? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. no we are just so excited. Rylan, you awake? Yeah. He's uh, debatable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, we're going to talk about scatter plot. We're going to try and make a scatter plot. We're going to talk about the trend line, but I don't think we're actually going to draw it. Draw it. Yes. Or we're not actually going to find the equation. Okay, so make a scatter plot. So as we make a scatter plot, first of all, the first item they usually give you, we want to put along the bottom. So in this case, we're going to put age along the bottom. And how is this age done? This age is done in terms of months. I'm going to scoot this up a little bit so I have a little bit of room here. Now, you always want to label your bottom. So I'm going to label my bottom axis as age. And it wouldn't hurt to write months after that. Gosh darn it. I was afraid that would happen. Now, how do I how many months do I have to label up to? Uh, nine. We have to go up to nine. Where should we start? One. Even before one? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do. Follow along so you can make this with me. Oh. I'm going to put zero at the corner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, because there's plenty of room, I'm going to do every other number, every other line as one. So I'm going to do zero, skip a line, one. Skip a line, two. Skip a line, three. Skip a line, four. Getting the idea? Skip five. Skip six. Skip seven. Skip eight. Skip Nine. And I end up about two from the end if you do that right. Yeah, I did that great. Right. Okay. So just a bunch of skips. Every other one's a skip. Now, the other piece is going to go along the side. What's the other information they give us? Body length. So I'm going to label my axis. Always a good habit to have. I'm going to label it in terms of inches. How far should I label here? Nine. Say what? Body length. What kind of labels should I have? How far do I have to go? 29. I have to go at least to 29, yes? We have to at least start at 8. Eight's close enough to 0. I'd rather you just start it at 0. And I can't count all the way up to 29 or 30. I don't have 29 or 30 lines. So if I can't quite make it, I'm going to count in terms of twos. Now, and I am going to use every line here. So my first line is zero. My next line is two, four, six, eight. No, you can't skip lines if you're going to make it. So 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. After 20 is 22. 24, 26, 28, and 30. Okay. Now, do you know how to graph these dots? Uh, yeah, I remember that. Well, eight, no, see, like, one is eight, so you go to the zero line and go up to eight. And over to one? Yeah. So it's just like ordered pairs. Age one, eight, body length eight, so I'm going to go over one, up eight, and I'm going to make a dot. Do it with me. So I went over one, over to the one line, up to the eight line, and made a dot. My next one is two. 11.75. So I'm going to go over to the two line. And 11.75 is almost 
12. So I'm going to go almost to 12 line. Then we have 3 and 15.5. So I'm going to go over to the 3 line and up to 15.5, which is almost to 16. Four, 16.7. So I'm going to go over to the four line and I'm going to go past the 16 line, but not to 18. So not quite halfway between there. Five and 20.1. So I'm going to go over to the five line and up to 20. 20.1, excuse me, but good enough, right? 6 and 22.2. Over to the 6 and pretty much up to 22. 22. Now, 7, we don't know because that's part of the questions is the approximate length of a 7-month-old panda. We'll, get, we'll come back to that. 8 and 26.5. So over to 8 and up to 26.5, which is just a little bit above 26. And the last point I have is 9 and 29. So over to 9 and up to 29, which is halfway between 28 and 30. Okay. Did it make a perfectly straight line? No, I didn't even close. That might be close when the facts are I mean, mine's somewhat close, but it's not a straight line. And is it supposed to be a straight line? No. No. It should be somewhere kind of along the line, but it's not supposed to be a straight line. Now, so there's your scatter plot. Okay. That's what we did there for the scatter plot. Now, it asks us to draw a trend line. How do I draw a trend line? Uh, yeah, draw a line close to it. So a trend line, what I tend to do, and I can't do this very well in the BenQ, is I tend to take a ruler and try and find what's the best fit line. Okay, what's the line that goes kind of through the middle of the dots? It's not going to be perfect by any means, is it? But it's approximate. And so you kind of want to end up with some of the dots above the line, some of the dots below the line. Now, I don't know that I can do this on the bin Q. Huh? I just, just because I struggle to draw lines, and so... Okay, well, so I'm going to erase this because I'm not crazy about it. I would say I went a little too high at this line because what happened as I went up? I got it farther, I started going farther away, didn't I? And again, this is my first attempt on the BenQ. Not crazy about it. So I'm going to try it again and try and go at a lower angle. Okay, there's my attempt. I caught some of the dots, some of the dots are below, some of the dots are above. That is my attempt at a trend line. Now, you guys do math Excel for homework, right? And writing an equation of the trend line, it's going to be multiple choice in your exam for tonight. Now, okay, so think with me though. Okay, equation of the trend line. What's our equation form that we often talk about? We've learned it a couple of times now. Slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where b is your y intercept, and m is your slope. Okay, now. 
Can you give me a guesstimate of my y-intercept here? What do your, what's your guesstimate by looking at my picture for a y-intercept? Y-intercept is where my graph does what? Cross. Crosses the, uh, the y-axis. Y Which one's the y-axis? One. This one? Okay, the one that goes up and down. Where does my line that I drew approximately cross the y-axis? Is that about six? Yeah. Now, I, I don't know. Is yours about six? Maybe close? Uh, I think okay. I drew my line for my numbers on the crooked. Okay. And so mine is about six. And here's the deal. Will you be able to eyeball this on Math Excel? That's what I'm trying to set you up for. Barely, no, this will take me two hours to do no, but okay, it's it's multiple choice on math Excel. Oh, you can just guess it. If we get through this, you can possibly still get your homework done at this rate. It's multiple choice because it's multiple choice and stuff. So, okay, now a slope. Here's what I'm going to say about slope. It's going to be harder to guess your slope, but can you tell me if this is a positive or negative slope? Positive. How do I know it's positive? This is going up. It's going up, right? This is a positive correlation, and so a positive correlation is going to be a positive slope. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you some tips of how you can pick out your equation because it is multiple choice, so I'm not going to stress about trying to... There's a lot of work done with actually writing the equation. Am I making sense here to so those of you that are still with me? Yeah, yeah. starting to... I mean, here's the deal. If you're looking at multiple choice, could you look for one that has a positive slope and a y-intercept around 6? You could look for that, right? Yeah. Some of the choices aren't going to have the right y-intercept. Some of them are going to have negative slopes, and I think that would be enough to get you done with the problem. Now, one more question, and we're going to use the graph to do this. That's our T51. Okay. Did I Listen, they asked us a question. What is the approximate length of a seven-month-old panda? If we had an equation, we could plug seven in and do the math. What can I do looking at my graph? We can guess. Where would we find the approximate length of a seven-month-old panda? Uh, probably right at seven. I said 23. Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to follow 7 up here. Mine appears to be right there ish. Yeah, in between 24 and 25, right? So for me, I would say this is approximately 24.5. That's not exact, is it? Okay, and again, it's going to depend on your paper, right? And I don't know that you have any of that to do in homework, but I wanted to mention it. Okay, and what is your homework? Uh, that's it. Tonight. Not tomorrow. <laughs> Lesson 5.7 in Math Excel. Math Excel. Hey, um, you guys are excited to see the Mr. Smith.